this for just Thank you so much, worship teams. Great, uh, it's great having uh, James up there and uh, Sandy and uh, just having the full band. How many of you guys appreciate that? That's kind of nice. We were talking about uh, adding a few people and I said, hey, as long as you spread right out and stuff like that, then there's no reason we can't have more because we are all the worship team. Really, in reality, there isn't really a stage and audience right here. Is the church is a place where we all participate, both in the... Uh, uh, you know, a searching of God's word for truth, both in the time of worship, that there really, it isn't like going to a concert, where you go to a concert, you sit, and they sing, and then you applaud at the end, you know, they did a great job, you, we are all participating in this, and so in reality, there isn't a stage, this is all a stage, and so I really welcome you to this time of worship, and uh, uh, I'm spending some time with God today, and so I just want to uh, pray, and just kind of consecrate our times, that this time today would be special. So we're going to be sharing uh, in communion today. And communion is not about church membership. You know, here is this is if you're a member or anything like that. Communion is about if you declare that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you are more than welcome to share in the Lord's Supper with us here today. And so we have our uh, uh, communion cups. If you got them by the door, if you didn't, then you can kind of, uh, you know, maybe slip up your hand or go see Randy right by the door there. We have the uh, communion cups here that's all sealed. So it has like uh, the little wafer in the top and we'll share in that at the end here today. So if you need one of those, just let me know or whatever, or, or Randy, we can get you one uh, if you didn't get one at the door. So the wafer's in the top and, the, uh, and then the juice is there as well. And so we'll be sharing in this. We'll do it together at the end. And so uh, I'm just hoping that I won't spill this on my lap, you know, this morning here. I haven't actually tried one of these, so it could be a childproof, you know, so I meet, might need our kids. Kids? Might need your help over here. You know, if I can't get this open, I'll turn it over to you. If you, you know, if you need something childproof, you just hand it to a kid and they can crack it open. It's because I'll end up as like service one will be staying here and service two will be on the other. So I'm going to try not to do that, but we'll see what happens. Um, but let's just let's just pray right now and just ask that God would just do something special in, in our in our lives here today. Heavenly Father. We love just spending time with you, Lord. We, we, we're just so thankful of this opportunity where we can uh, be together with brothers and sisters of like mind, like faith, Lord, that, that we can uh, search your scriptures, Lord, that we can spend time worshiping you and declaring that you are Lord. As Lord, as we just sang that, that Christmas carol, Lord, reminds us that, Lord, today is the first Sunday of Advent, Lord. And as we enter into this amazing season where we just prepare our hearts, Lord, to remember the promise of what, uh, you have done for us, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, Jesus, be with us on this special time. Just bring your peace and your joy and your life into our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we'll be sharing uh, Lent together. And so what you have, uh, if you didn't already grab it uh, last week, but by the door. Um, so by the way, is when we come in, we come in through this door. Uh, and then we exit through that door at the end. Um, until it snows and then if if it does then we'll move to skis we'll hand out skis and you can ski down the ramp on the way out or we'll come up with a different alternative then but there is right by the door there is uh, our daily breads the large print so if you need a devotional um also we'll be doing advent so the every day of advent we'll be sharing together uh and if you'd like to join us there's lots of these available and so they're right there by the door um, so you can grab one of those on the way out and every day has one of the different uh, uh, either pastors or ministry workers with the, uh, the be in Christ and uh, they're just sharing a truth something for you to think about and meditate every day and that also on our, our email every week there's a different activity a family activity that you can do together and uh, if you guys would like to do that together as a family and then send it in to, my, uh, to Melanie. Uh, then we'll kind of put together. I'd love to just kind of post to, hey, this week, this was our, it was wreath making, or we did like a family activity, or, you know, Debbie got Graham to do this, and uh, here's our wreath that, that Graham made, and uh, 
you don't see this happening? No. <laughs> Debbie's like, yes, Graham's like, no. <laughs> so, you know, then we can show it. Say this week, this is what the kids made. And so just send us a picture of your completed craft. And I'd love to just, uh, just kind of feature it. So uh, if you got to join us in that, you can do that. So that's our devotional. Set those down here. So let's look at some let's look at some truth here today, shall we? And uh, if you have your uh, your Bible, you can turn to Luke chapter two. And uh, we're going to look at something I think is important during this and timely during this season. Is I don't uh, uh, I don't kind of preach out of the preacher's book, you know, where you pull it open, it's the same sermons, you know, every 52 weeks of the year, and you know, Christmas, Christmas, Easter is Easter, and I, uh, what I try to do is just kind of praise, I'm going through and doing my own personal study, and say, God, what are you, what are you really saying to us today? What is a, what is a now message? Because rhema, word of God, rhema means the, the God-breathed word, so it's more than just words on a page, it means the, the timely in season, so it's a word that kind of hits your heart going, that's what I need right here and right now, and so um, I really pray for a rhema word in, in, your, in, your, in your heart, that it would really, God would quicken something inside of you. So um, as we move into the first season of Advent, I think it's important. Let, let me just kind of put it in context here today. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14, says this. It says, glory to God in the highest. It's in verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for I bring you great tidings, good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Good tidings of great joy. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, and you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Can you just picture that as I was reading? You can just picture the little kids coming up in their bathrobes, mom and dad's bathrobes, and a little towel on their head slipping off, and the, you know, maybe you know, uh, a couple sheep, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the Christmas you know, story. That as we know it, as we revisit it, usually as we do it at, um, for children's ministry, you know, for Sunday school, the kids all act it out, and, and that you can almost picture them shuffling in. And, but as you remember back to the original story, there's something about this just talks about joy where it says that there is joy to the world that there is going to be you know something coming that is going to change things forever and probably you know it comes to mind is our favorite you know what is the most well-known christmas song in the world somebody shout it out joy to the world joy to the world is the most known of all of them. i mean there's probably five or ten they may be your favorite you know but joy to the world is probably the most well known of all the christmas songs and and it talks about you know joy to the world the lord has come let the earth receive her king let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing let every heart prepare him room and i would just uh challenge us today that we would make room in our heart for christ today as we talk about this, this, this joy to the world, and, and, and the song was written by, the, the author was, uh, uh, songwriter was Isaac Watts, and he wrote the song, not so much about the first Christmas, but actually out of the, uh, the, the Psalms, and so he would rewrite the Psalms, and so it became a Christmas song, but he never actually intended it to be an Advent song. He wrote it as he paraphrased Psalm uh, 98, and um, Let's just read Psalm 98 and see where, where he got this from. Because again, it's talking, you know, it fits. It's an amazing story of Christmas there. But actually, Psalm 98 is, is an amazing uh, uh, picture of this. So let's, let's turn there. So Listen again to some common, common wording here. It says, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful deeds. His right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. nation. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Break out in praise and song for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp and with the harp and the melodious song. 
with trumpets and the entire sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord the King. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise and let all the earth and all the living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee and let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness. Wow. Joy, 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 joy. Rivers clapping their hands, all the earth singing, a tremendous celebration. And what is a common, uh, you know, in what we read in the, in the Christmas story and a common thread in what we read there? It's simply that three-letter word, joy. Now, when I say the word joy, what comes to your mind? I mean, you know, when I think of joy, you know, it's, 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 it's an amazing concept, but it's more than what we just think it is. You know, as, as I think of joy, it's, it's, it's happy, it's good. I think of joy as, a, you know, there's a young woman I know, she's Filipino uh, from Mississauga. Her name was Joy, and she, she lived her name. I mean, she was so bubbly and full of life and that, you know. So I think joy, I think her. I kind of picture joy, right? But there's more to it than this. When it's talking about this joy, it's more than a feeling of goodwill or happiness. Because happiness is circumstance-based. So this week, Melanie was kind of getting some things ready. She's, okay, by December, I want to try and get our Christmas cards already. And, you know, and how do we get them? Because we can't hand them out. We got to mail them. You know, you get that all organized. And, you know, and how about you write like a little, uh, you know, little uh, newsletter of, two, you know, uh, of our year. Do it, you know, but try and write it as good as Pastor Gerald. Like Pastor Gerald's, you know, and, and James, your newsletter. I don't know who writes it or you both write it. They're the best written newsletter I've ever written. It's just, it describes things. It's, it's your life. But I mean, it's so colorful and picture. It's like poem, poetry, right? right? And she goes, and what do you have to come up with? I was like, well, 2020, uh, it was pretty good, but it kind of sucked. <laughs> she goes, come on, you can do better than that. You know, it's just, you know, uh, and, and so it's, it's trying to look at it. And I thought, you know, what is that? There is a message that needs to come forth at a time and a season in our lives right now. And that is a message of joy, the joy that is more than the, the happy bubbly, the warm fuzzy that we're talking about here, a joy that is real, that is life-giving, that is sustaining, that is not based on circumstance, because the joy that God's talking about, when God talks about joy, it's not that, you know, that bubbly, you know, Filipino girl that I know, you know, it's not, he's not talking about that, he's talking about something that is actually a life force, because God doesn't just have joy, God is joy. And I want to look at that a little bit today about what this really means. Because what is joy? I mean, joy is more than a dish soap. I was going to bring it, but I was like, oh, we got palm olive. I looked under the cupboard and I was like, oh, you got palm olive instead of joy. But I wanted to bring joy and be like a little infomercial here. But joy is more than a dish soap. It's more than a, you know, a marketable name and a concept here. So if we look at a, a real concept of joy, this is, this is, and let me read a passage of scripture that, is, that challenged me for a long time. And that's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Turn it, if you have your Bible, or you can do it on your phone electronically or whatever you want. But I got to read something to you that challenged me for a long time because I was like, I think there's a typo here, or I think maybe this doesn't fit. And so sometimes when you read something, you're like, okay, I'm going to put that aside for a little bit. And you'll just, God, I need to understand there's more to it than this. Hebrews 12, 2, because I would just, I would preach on the beginning, but the part here, part of it, let me just share with you here today. So look, let's look at this. Hebrews 12, verse 2, reading in the New King James Version says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of, of our faith. Wow. I could preach for a month on that, right? I mean, putting a focus on Jesus, that he is the author, he is the focus of our life, he's the finisher, the carrier, that we put our focus and, and our zoom on him, and I would get our optic zoom, and I bring my biggest telescope, and, and I would set it up here in a tripod and get it, hey, this is what our focus needs to be. If we have our focus on him, this will be key. But as we read on here, it says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god whoa wait a minute here can we just take a time out i can't whistle very well time out so for the joy of the cross obviously that that is a mistype when they just took the the you know the, the greek and brought it into you know uh, king james english or whatever obviously they they substitute the wrong word there joy for the cross how many have ever read that and just wondered a little bit about that okay like three of us 
Don't the rest of you read your Bible? Come on. <laughs> you know, you get, sometimes you've got to read it, and, and it's good to have a questioning mind going like, oh, well, what do you really mean in this? Rather than just reading it with that, you know, mm-hmm, yes, that's nice, that church lady face. That's nice. That's special. You know, looking at it going like, oh, God, what does that mean, actually? The joy of the cross, because if I look at that, it's like saying, I joy, you know, the joy before my root canal. I'm going in for a root canal this week. The joy of having a Revenue Canada audit. Woohoo! The joy of walking on hot coals. Right? Come on, guys. I'm saying I'm provoking. I know this is early. Is this too early? Maybe I need to hand out coffee. James, run around the coffee cart. Get the cappuccino going. Too early? Too much? Think about this for a second, guys. The joy of the cross. This, in our context, in our modern-day colloquial English, doesn't make sense. Does it? Till we understand a little bit more about what real, real joy is, the, the joy that God is talking about, then it starts to make sense. So can we dig into this a little bit? Because I, I want, sometimes I, I want the, the scripture to just stop you a little bit and going like, I, I don't know. How does that work? How do you have joy for the cross? How did Jesus have a joy in preparation for the cross? Because the Christmas story isn't about just the sweet baby Jesus, and that's your favorite one. And Christmas story is great, and Easter is good, but it's a little, it's a little bloodier. But I, I like the Christmas story, and we have our focus and our favorite baby Jesus. But the purpose was, Jesus said, I came to give my life. I actually came knowing that I was going to lay down my life for you and I. So let's look at this for a second here. If there's joy in this, let's understand what it means. So if you go back to the original word, uh, it's, it, it's kara, you know? It's the original word means joy or delight. Hmm. So then he has delight about facing the cross. That still doesn't really make sense to me. So if you look a little deeper, and this is why the, the Greek is such an amazing language, because, I mean, it takes one word in Greek and describe is like a, a whole sentence or a or paragraph, you know, or, you know, in, in English. It's just such a, 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 an amazing, deep language. And so if you dig in a little bit deeper, when you first look at and scratch the surface, it means delight. You're going, well, he has delight, but it can't just mean delight about the cross. So then you dig in a little bit deeper, and it can also mean, is the, this word kara can also mean to lean forward or to be favorably uh, disposed. It means to lean into something. And I'm like, okay, I may be a little bit of a slow learner, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting somewhere here. It means a delight to lean into something, to, to press into something. And the third meaning is when the light bulb finally came on. How many you like it when the light bulb finally comes on? You're like, ah, oh, okay, now I'm starting to see this. The third meaning of the word kara means an acute awareness of God's grace and favor. The power of joy is grace recognized. It means to lean into the grace of God. It's not just, uh, again, a feeling of goodwill or delight or butterflies or a warm fuzzy on the inside. This joy means to lean in towards the grace of God, to press in towards something that knows the, 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 the long game, if I can put it that way. That's the power of joy. The power of joy is that it's not stuck in the moment. Happiness is in a moment, you know? When I have my, my favorite cup of coffee and I made my own coffee and ground up, you know, my, uh, you know, the, what is our favorite coffee? You know, the, the kicking horse, you know, and ground up some of the beans and I brought it in my thermos and just let me, I'm slurping it on purpose. <laughs> Trying to make you guys a little jealous. My favorite kicking horse coffee, fresh ground beans. Mm, the aroma was waking me up. It took like half an hour. But you know what? The purpose of what I'm talking about here is that it is more than just that feeling. The, the power of joy is the best analogy I can come up with is a woman in childbirth. A woman in childbirth. And we're thinking about that is that for nine months, and again, this is a man talking here. I'm just saying as a guy, let me just predispose this already. Because this trumps everything. Because Melanie heard somebody, you know, say, well, this guy, this, he's feeling this way. Melanie's, oh, it's probably, it's a man. He probably just had a man cold. I was like, you're so mean. Because whatever we do, because this is a side note, this is not in my notes. Whatever we do as guys, it doesn't matter. You can have a kidney stone the size of a boulder, all right? And you can lose your appendix and nothing will meet just giving birth to children. So it doesn't matter. Don't, don't bother even bringing it up. Right, Brad? Right? I threw out three vertebrates this week. It's nothing like birth on a baby. Okay, you Trump, you win. 
I'm just helping you guys. Is this the right, Bill? Right? So, <laughs> yes, dear, exactly, you know? So when my wife says, I had five, ch- five babies, I'm like, you win. I just have a man cold. <laughs> But let's look at the example. Actually, the analogy is perfect because it was her recollection of the birth of our children is completely different than mine. She goes, oh, you know what? You know, a few years back, this is not even that long ago, a few years back, she goes, you know what? I think we should go back and have more. Like five wasn't enough. I want to have like seven or It was so great. She says, let's, let's have more. It was amazing. And I'm like, I don't know that it was so amazing. She says, what are you talking about? It was amazing. It was beautiful. I was like, no, it was like, it was like, it was messy. And there was screaming and there was doctors in and out. And remember when Spencer was born, I passed out. (laughs) I mean, just give me credit. I was up all night, hadn't eaten, you know, it was like that. But I mean, I just took one look and hit the floor. And and she's like, ah, the nurses are all around picking me up. And I just see the ceiling there. Like, I, I just remember it totally different than she does. Right? Come on, guys, you're not helping me out here. I'm not feeling any help at all. They're like, I'm not saying anything. This guy's on his own, right? But see, the difference is, is that when she saw that baby, when Skylar and Sierra and Spencer, Sully, little baby Sully came out. I know it's hard to picture this big guy, but little Sully came out, his little beard. (laughs) And Savannah came out. She forgot it all. In the moment, I mean, like a week later, be like, do you want to have another baby? Absolutely, let's do this all over again, you know, like, and where I just still remember the pain, and I still remembered, you know, her twisting my arm, you know, like this, you did this to me, you know, like, you know, just the the struggle and the long hours of this, like, no one looks the same, I just want to go through the the joy of the the, the childbirth, it's not about the childbirth, it's about the, the, the promised child at the end. It's at the end when the baby comes out and when they bring the baby and put it in your arms and when you take that baby home, it's the most amazing thing. Is that makes you forget all of the nine months of, you know, being sick in the morning and struggling, you know, and trying to, you know, uh, okay, I got to switch and get the maternity pants, which I think are awesome for going into like, you know, the, the buffet. I wear them myself. <laughs> you go to the Mandarin, I wear, I wear the uh, maternity pants and you got lots of room to go back. I'm just kidding. You forget all of that because of the joy of the baby. Come on, are, is this true? Help me out here, guys. This is absolutely true. When you bring the baby home, all of those nine months are gone. You know, the, the, the wrestling through, the walking, the unknown, the, you know, the uncertainty, the, the figuring things out, all of that is gone in a moment. When you bring it home, all that you see is the promised child, right? And that's what joy is. That is the greatest description of the the joy that God is calling about here. And that's the joy that Jesus had going into the cross. Because Jesus going to the cross was not a happy expectation. He knew what he was looking for. He knew what was going to be coming of him. And it wasn't that he was like, I'm looking forward to being scourged. I'm looking forward to being whipped. I'm looking forward to being nails driven through my hand and his feet. He was not. But what he was looking for was the promise at the end. What became exciting for him and what hope is, hope is a, is a view of the promise at the end. Hope is a view that, yes, this may be our present suffering. This may be what is happening right now, but this is not forever. Come on, church. Amen. That's what real joy is all about. That's what real joy is all about. Jesus realized that on the other side of the cross, that there would be salvation for mankind there would be grace and sins forgiven and a restored relationship. And when he looked at that, he's saying, how did he ever get through? How did he ever hang on the cross for those long hours and, and the trial and being up all night and, and carrying the cross on the road to Golgotha? How did he do it? How did he do it? He looked through the eyes of hope and he saw you. He saw you. He saw me. He looked through the eyes of time and saw you and I restored in a relationship back to his heavenly father, washing, walking, washed, forgiven, re- a broken relationship restored, in an amazing relationship with God again, forgiven and having grace bestowed. And when he saw you and I, that he was like, I can go through this. Just like for the woman that, that goes in saying, okay, it's time to go to the hospital to get the bags packed. The baby's coming. The same way, saying, I can go through this because at the end, this is going to be amazing. 
And that's what I want to talk about. So we hear that is the joy we know is a, is a major contributing, you know, a theme of Christmas and of Advent. But I want you to know it is so much more than lights and, and, and you know, and, 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 and presents and thought and turkey and all of those things that, that are, are a part of the, the Advent season. It's actually joy is a part of the promise fulfilled. That's why we're celebrating the Lord's Supper today. Because Jesus saw this, Jesus saw this restored relationship that he knew that his blood would be for a new covenant, not of rules and regulations that we could never fulfill. Come on, 620 rules and regulations. If the Israelites couldn't do it, you know, in hundreds of years, then we can't do it either, right? But it's about grace, and grace is about a merit that has been given to us that we could not earn. Grace is about being given a gift that you couldn't buy on your own, a righteousness that we could never earn. Joy sees the other side. The joy that I'm talking about here, the joy of the Lord sees the other side. It doesn't just look at things. If you just look at things today, and if you just look at yourself, and you're going, I don't know that I have joy, and I don't know that I have what you're talking about here. Joy looks forward and sees the other side. Joy says, God's got this. You know the saying that people would say, I don't know my future, but I know the one who holds my future? That's what joy is. That's what joy makes that kind of declaration. Nehemiah 8 verse 10, it says this, don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So this is way more than just a butterfly's happy feeling that you just won 10 bucks on the pick, pick 10 lottery. This is more than just you got a good parking spot right at the front of the mall parking lot. This is more than all of this. It's that the joy of the Lord actually becomes your and my strength. Are we walking in that strength today? Come on, church, we need to be walking in that. That needs to be a major anchor to our life, is this joy that I'm talking about here. So let's reread Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, with this new understanding in mind, you know? It says, you know, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, which is the delight of leaning into God's promise, he saw grace on the other side. And so he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Doesn't that make so much more sense? Leaning in with delight at the promise of what God was yet to do is the joy that gave him strength to pass through. And so today, as we remember what Jesus has done, I'd like you to take your your cup, if you have it with you, And I want us to remember with joy today that the Lord's Supper is not a memorial of a dead God that is in a tomb. That this should be the most joyful celebration. I don't mean that it's in in a way that is disrespectful. I mean that it is a way that is amazing, that should bring such strength to us. So today, as as we read this, let me read it to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23 to 26, it says, For I pass on to you, this is Paul to the Corinthian church, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to it, thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. So this little piece of bread, let me try and uh, get that out. I pulled the wrong way from here. I pulled the wrong tab. All right. Let me back up a little bit. Thank you. (laughs) So you pull the little clear tab at first. Okay, this is not built for gorilla sized hands. I stick my tongue out to get this. But here's what's key. And I want us to remember this. It's not about the quality of the bread, that this is fresh made or wafer. It's about what it symbolizes. Jesus said when he sat with his disciples on the night that he was going to be betrayed, he knew what was coming. So with joy, he sat with his disciples, just like this in a setting like this in the upper room. And he took this, he took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Broken like childbirth. Broken 
so that there would be something on the other side. He didn't just be broken so that we could be broken along with him. The Bible says in Isaiah that, that by his stripes that we are healed, that his body was broken so that we could have health and life, so that he was broken so that we could be restored. Let us remember today that Jesus' body that was broken for us, the promise and joy of that, so that we could walk healthy, life-giving in a relationship with God. Let's take it right now and remember this. In verse 25, it says, And in the same way, Jesus took the cup of wine after supper and said, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirming with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. This is an amazing symbol. This signifies a new covenant. The old covenant we could not fulfill. It was a high jump that was 20 meters tall. It was an unachievable goal to show man that they could not earn their way into, into righteousness with God. Is that all of our good deeds couldn't add up. But Jesus said, I have a new covenant. I'm taking your place so that you could come. This covenant is a new covenant of grace and of mercy. And I want, as we take this today, for us to remember that this is forgiveness. This is, a, this is a fresh and a brand new start. And if you need a fresh and a brand new start in your life, then this is it. This is accepting what Jesus has done. And Jesus, your blood is a new covenant. It is forgiveness and of mercy and a brand new beginning in Jesus' name. Let's remember that as we take it today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. May your word come alive inside of us. May it just explode inside of us, Lord, to realize the amazing joy and strength that you give us each and every day. Lord, as we remember what your son Jesus has done, as this is Advent, is the beginning of the story, Lord. And so the beginning is so exciting for us because we know the ending. We've read through to the end, Lord, and that is so exciting. Father, we thank you for this joy that gives us strength for today. I pray that, Lord, this would be a timely message, that, Lord, our message to the world, in spite of uh, pandemic and, and lockdown and, and, and economic uncertainty, Lord, that with all the fear and, uncer and, and uncertainty and, and, and discouragement that's going on in the world around us, Lord, both in our, in our workplace and, and schools and, and, and our communities, in our nation and in the world, that, Father, that the message of joy is still pertinent today. That, Lord, that we need to share this joy. This joy is not based on what the circumstance is now. The joy is leaning into your uh, grace and your mercy, Lord, seeing through to the other side. Father, we thank you that your grace and mercy gives us the ability and the strength to walk through this, Lord. Father, thank you for this. Thank you for joy to carry us and give us strength each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Walk in that joy this week. And just, I, just, I just encourage you to dig, your, dig into this this week and just exhibit that. When people say, what's the word of the day? You would say to them, joy is the word of the day. That's the message we need to hear today. Amen. God bless. Have an amazing week. And uh, feel free to uh, socialize and share. And uh, you guys can hang out here or, you know, or in the parking lot. It's nice and sunny today. So God bless. Have a great day.